work quietly and follow along. At any point, click the pause button to catch up or take a break. Hello, today we're going to be making clay hippos. We're going to start out with by making the hippo's body. And I grabbed a little pinch of clay. It's about the size of a golf ball. Okay, I'm going to roll it into a ball. I can use the table either to rotate it with my palm or I just kind of shape it with my hands. I like to do a little bit of both. We're going to be making a basic pinch pot. So to do that, I'm going to insert my thumb and then just simply pinch and turn the clay in my hand. You're going to keep turning and rotating until the wall is a little bit thinner than your pinky or about the thickness of your pinky. You don't wanna go through the bottom either. Same thing, you kinda of have to feel if it can't be any thicker than your pinky. The reason we're gonna be using a lot of pinch pots today is cause clay, when it is thicker than about a half inch or a thumb or a pinky, um, it can explode. So pinch pots are a really great way to have a hollow piece of artwork. We're going to make another pinch pot. Um, this one is going to be the head. Before we start the next one though, let's take this one for the body and see how I'm just slowly pulling it, the pinch pot. I just took my thumbs in there and I kind of peeled it, making the pinch pot and I can always go in and push in with my thumbs. And here, it just cracked a little bit. We're gonna just reseal that. Um, making the pinch pot kind of a longer shape. Here is gonna be the top of my hippo's body. Here's the side. And there we go. So that's going to be the body. For the head, we're gonna pinch off a little bit smaller than a golf ball. In fact, about half the size of your last piece of clay. Again, roll it into the ball. We're making another pinch pot here. So, same process. I use my hands, inserting my thumb and rotating as I pinch. There we go. I like to just put it on the table and then I smooth out all the edges. There we go. And both sides, inside and out. All right, keep this one nice and round because this is gonna be the head of our hippo. So let's bring over our body and you can see how your head is going to fit on there. It's okay if it looks a little big. Hippos kind of have a big head and maybe part of their body is submerged under the water. Let's attach the head using the score and slip method. So we're gonna use a comb and score all the areas, like the rim of the head pinch pot and the side where we're going to attach the head on the body. I attach my head so that it is touching the bottom of the pot and the table surface. So make sure that you score towards the very bottom. Let's apply some slip. Just dabbing around the rim and on the body. All right, here we go. We're just simply going to press the pinch pot and my pinch pot's all the way down to the bottom. It looks like this from the side. I'm just slowly pressing it in. Now because your pinch pot is hollow, be very careful you don't just smush it. Um, then it will completely break. Okay, now what you can do is you can use your finger to smush and smooth those sides together, that seam, all the way around. Be very careful you don't um, crush the pinch pot body. Always use a finger inside to kind of support that. There we go. Does not have to be perfectly smooth. Remember, hippos have lots of wrinkles and different things too, so it kind of looks like when they're pulling their head up out of the water um, that that's how their skin would be. Okay, here is the head and the body. We're now going to attach our hippo to its little pond or to a slab. Here is a slab I made for the pond of my hippo. And here is my hippo's body. I'm going to place my hippo on the slab where I want it. And using a tool, I'm just going to cut around the hippo. Now when you cut around your hippo, this looks almost like it's in a puddle. It's just a little piece of water. You can go for an oval or circle or even some kind of, you know, splat shape. So it doesn't have to be a perfect oval. I am just gonna go kind of like this. 
you can remove your extra scraps. And you can, if you want, just kind of run your finger around your edges to make sure they're nice and smooth. We need to now attach our hippo to the slab pond. So I'm gonna score, again, around the rim of my pinch pot and the bottom of the head, and where I'm going to place my hippo. I like to just score a pretty good area because you can always smooth it with your fingers. I'm gonna add some slip. And now some slip to the slab base. Okay, gently press on your hippo. Remember, your, your hippo is hollow. So you wanna be extremely careful that you don't crush its body. And it should stick very well. You then can use your finger to smooth around your hippo. And it would actually give the water a really cool effect while you're doing this, that it's almost creating like a ripple. Remember, an extra key if you wanna smooth something out is just take a little bit of slip on your finger and use that to kind of smooth down the clay. Awesome, we have our hippo on a slab pond. I'm gonna pick it up so you can kind of see how it's going. Looking good. Now we get to add the details of the hippo. So going more on the face, we have the snout, ears, eyes, maybe you want a little teeth or jaw, and the tail. Let's work on the snout. So again, take a little piece of clay. It doesn't have to be super big. I'm doing it about the size of my thumb now, just about like that. And you can roll it into another ball. I'm gonna pinch a little off. I bet it's a little, for me, a little too big. You have, you know, it depends what you want. Maybe you want your hippo to have a big snout or um, a smaller one. Once you have your clay into a ball, you're just going to kind of press it down. So you, it creates a nice flat oval or circle shape. You can put it back up to your clay hippo and see here, um, this is where I can kind of size it and take a little clay off if I want a little smaller. And you can redo the process of rolling into a ball and just kind of pushing it downward. There you go. You're gonna use your fingers to shape it how you desire. So there we go. And you can set it on there. I'm just doing that to get kind of a gauge and I'll push it up so you can kind of see where we're at here. Awesome. Now we're gonna attach using the score and slip method. I'm scoring mainly at the bottom of the hippo's head. And I'm going to press that on. You can do a little smoothing with your fingers. There we go. You can also rotate your hippo to see all the different sides and press it all different ways. There we go. Now I'm just gonna kinda press my head and kinda start to shape it, just like that. Okay, awesome, looking good. Now here's the time where you can add different little areas um, of character, like eyes and ears and nostrils. Let's do the nostrils next and then I can talk about eyes. For the nostrils, I just take a tool and I just press it into the clay, like so. <laughs> um, so eyes, you can add eyes, like making little clay balls and scoring and slipping them on. Or you can just indent into the clay however you see um, you want your hippo's character. Or you could do both, like here I'm adding an eye and then I could indent it um, to just kind of give it a little bit more character. Those are some ways you can add eyes. I'm pressing that in. <laughs> there we go. Ears, ears are really gonna start to make it look more like a hippo. So for ears, I just take a little circle of clay and then I give it a little pinch in my fingers. This is the same as if we would press it on the table. And now I'm just going to use the score and slip, a little score, and I can even press into the clay a little bit more to create a pocket. 
getting a little slip. Now the ears are kind of tiny, so don't worry about trying to score everything because you can use your finger to really smooth it into the clay. I'm going to make another ear. Pressing it and smoothing it into the clay. Okay, I'm going to pick it up so you can see it from this angle. And what you can do is I like to just kind of give a little texture in there and kind of press into the ear. There we go. So I just took my knife and I just went like this. Pretty cool. I'm going to add a tail now. For a tail, I just make a small, very small coil. So I take a piece of clay and I roll it on the table. Pinch it to my desired width and length. And then I'm going to score and slip it onto the clay. You can use your finger to kind of smooth it in there. There we go. Now I can really shape the hippo's body as well. So always kind of adjusting it. Awesome. Next, what you're going to do is you get to build your hippo's environment. So what I first like to do is I like to take a knife or some type of tool to add texture. And I like to add ripples because as animals and we do, as we move through the water, um, it changes and adds ripples. You don't have to do this, but I just like to do it to make it look a little bit more realistic. There we go. Other things you can add to your hippos, um, you know, rocks, grass, or, you know, artists change it up and do something really creative. Like maybe your hippo is chilling out and he's wearing some sunglasses. Maybe he's eating a piece of pizza in the pond. You never know. Possibilities are endless with art. I'm going to leave this open ended. Uh, for you to really add your own spin on it. Have a great day. Bye.